Uh, it's a midday game. It's against Idaho State at the beautiful Illusion Stadium. So to talk about that and all things UNLV, very happy to have the man himself. He is the uh, UNLV athletic director and was a pretty darn good college football player in his day. So very happy to have UNLV AD Eric Harper joining us right on the line. Mr. Harper, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? I'm good, sir. How are you doing, Mark? Doing good, Eric. I appreciate you coming on. So uh, I would assume you would probably agree with me, right? This is an exciting time for UNLV football where we have the first game of the year uh, kicking off on Saturday. A lot of new faces, right? But uh, this is exciting. Absolutely exciting. Uh, obviously, going into year three into Elysian Stadium, uh, the excitement of just the, the lure of college football mm -hmm. is absolutely outstanding, especially with so much going on this year. People forget about your career. You were a heck of a player yourself. Uh, I would imagine you've been to some practices this year. What can you tell us about this team? Uh, a lot of new faces, maybe some fans that are going to the game. They haven't seen some of these guys play yet. Uh, what can you tell us? What have you seen? Uh, I've seen a talented group of young men that uh, seem to be coming together and, and working well together. Uh, I see some uh, some young men that are, are passionate about representing the Rebels, and I see some coaches that are equally uh, as passionate and equally comfortable with the level of talent that they've recruited with the number of individuals they have that are new. And they've, uh, looks like to me, they've uh, really gelled them together well through the, through the times I've been in practice and looking forward to what they do when the lights come on and uh, they're between the, the lines out at uh, Allegiant Stadium. Let's talk about Allegiant Stadium. Let's get this one out of the way because a lot of people have talked about the field situation there, right? We know that uh, there's a Raiders game Friday night against the New England Patriots. We also know that uh, UNLV is going to be playing on that same field, the professional field that the Raiders are going to be playing on. Uh, some people would say, well, UNLV football, they haven't had the opportunity to practice there this week. That's not good for them. That's a disadvantage. What, what's your take on this whole thing? How did this come about, and what are your thoughts on it as the UNLV athletic director? Well, depending on, you know, that, that's up to the team to determine whether being in there uh, makes a difference to them playing or not. Uh, obviously, uh, some of our players have not been there. Uh, for me, it's uh, just with the timing of us being able to be on TV uh, with CBS Sports Network uh, and being able to play the game at 1230. You know, we've had a lot, several games that have played at 7, 730 at night. Uh, but this game being able to play at 1230 on grass is uh, pretty, pretty special uh, in a lot of ways. Um, I'm an old school throwback. I prefer to play on grass. Uh, but it's uh, it's an opportunity to play in a Legion Stadium. Uh, whether you've been in there and you ha or have not been in there, the allure of being able to play on a professional field is absolutely phenomenal for a young no, man. No question. Uh, it's one of the best places to play a college football game as far as facilities-wise. Um, not just that, but the practice facilities you have. You must be very proud of the facilities you have there at UNLV. I don't think anybody would argue that. All right, let me ask you this question. Um, expectations, right? Athletic directors are asked expectations and I'm not asking you wins or losses because I think that would be a very unfair question to ask you and undue pressure on a coaching staff. I'm not going to ask you that, but I am going to ask it this way at the end of the year, when we're talking two or three months from now, what is a successful UNLV football season uh, to you? And again, I'm not even necessarily asking wins, losses, just in your perspective as the athletic director in three months from now, what would make you say, man, that was a really good, positive football year for UNLV? Yeah, we're better on the last day of the season than we are on the first day of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, that That is going to sound like a cliche, but that is absolutely an extremely important factor as it relates to is a program or is a team improving? Are they better on the last day? than they were on the first day. And I think we have an opportunity to do that. Uh, and, you know, obviously with all the pieces of the puzzle, we have to stay healthy. Uh, that's just the nature of college football or any sport for that matter. You have to stay healthy so that you have consistency in players on the field. You have consistency in what you're able to do in practice and preparation for the season. And I think uh, the healthier you are, the better you are. Do you feel like injuries, particularly in the new era of Coach Arroyo, have been a big factor? And how would you how do you assess the first two years under Coach Arroyo? I mean, obviously we got we got better. Um, you know, the first year is very difficult for everybody in the country. 
uh, some more so than others. Uh, you know, not not being able to have fans and fans make a gigantic difference in in the energy that a a team has on the field. Uh, evidence of of what our student section did for for basketball this past year uh, that is extremely important. The you know the at the end you know we're, we're better than last year. Uh, the what what goes on in year two uh, in 2021 we obviously had two more wins than we did in the previous year losing six games by by a score one score uh, you know the ball bounces this way or that way for us uh, turns into more wins so I think uh, in 2021 we were a much better ball club than we were in 2020 even with the COVID 22 I think with the new guys on the on the team. You know, 31 or 33 new guys. Uh, I think the depth is stronger. Uh, I see that Coach Arroyo is more relaxed in his coaching. Uh, relaxed in the sense that he feels confident he's got the pieces to the puzzle that he needs to win consistently. Uh, tell me if you think this is unreasonable or not, Eric. Uh, if a fan walked up to you or, or a talk show host like myself said, okay, you're three under Coach Arroyo. Obviously, you got to stay healthy and there's a lot of variables and hopefully the ball bounces your way. I get all that. But if, if someone came up to you and said, hey, Eric, you know, it's year three now. Uh, we got to compete to try to get into a ball game. doesn't mean you have to get into a ball game. It's hard to do. But it, whether that means, you know, a number of wins or, or just getting to a point at the end of the year where you can say, OK, we got a chance. It, you believe that's an acceptable goal this year? Absolutely. I mean, Coach Arroyo is a Division One. Uh, head football coach. He understands improvement uh, from year one, year two, to year three, to year four. It's it's not a new it's not a new ball game to him. I mean, every program. I was at at Kansas State when Bill Snyder started there in 1989. Uh, we won one game, uh, but we got better each year moving forward. Right. <clears throat> and you know, and I, I you know, I, I, you hear it a lot of times. You know, trust the process. Right. And that's what 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 coaches do. They trust the process. Uh, they evaluate what they do, self-awareness, and, and understand and get better each and every uh, day if they can. Right. You know, some days are going to be you, – you may be flat, uh, but at the same time, uh, you create your opportunities. And I think uh, with an optimistic defense coming uh, under Coach Hayward, I think we'll have an opportunity to create some additional turnovers and additional possessions during the game. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with UNLV Athletic Director Eric Harper. UNLV opens the season, uh, luckily at home, uh, on Saturday against Idaho State. Uh, so, Coach, obviously when you look at the women's basketball program, you must be very proud. Coach LaRock's been on the show before. What a wonderful job she has done. What a great year last year getting into the NCAA tournament. And then you look at Kevin Kruger, who who I think is, is a great guy, great family. I'm sure you would agree. Lon's awesome. And I thought Kevin did a great job last year, and he's really turning this thing around. Uh what what do you think needs to happen? And I know this is the billion dollar question, but what do you think needs to happen to get the football team, you know, to that point where you could say, "Wow, look at this! Look at where we're at right now." I mean, why why is it? And I know you haven't been here that long as long, you know, the last forty years. UNLV football has made only four bowl games. Obviously, you want to see that number go up. I get that, and I understand it's a process. But what needs to happen with the UNLV program, football program, that maybe? Uh, has already happened with the women's basketball program, and I do believe Kevin's getting there as well. No, I mean, it, it all boils down at the end of the day to recruiting uh, and getting the right pieces to the puzzle. Football is a very, very <clears throat> difficult sport because you got so many, many moving parts, uh, so many different players. <clears throat> we carry a roster of 105 players, and some of those players are going to have to be on scout team, and those things factor into the game week as well. But you got football is just a very difficult, taxing sport where you have to uh, have a a large number of players that are capable of playing, and you also have to have a number of players that are capable to back up those. So you know it's the old the old adage of next next person up, next man up in the game of football. Sure. But you, you have to have consistency, and I again I go back to Coach Schneider. Uh, when when he got to Kansas State and he he started to build on consistency and he had 13 rules to success when he started at Kansas State after 30 plus years of coaching at Kansas State he only had 16 rules to success mm -hmm. so uh, the 13 stayed and he added three more right. uh, as time goes on so you know just being consistent in what you do trusting your process and, and having guys and the community 
and the campus and the team and everybody consistently, consistently buy in to what is going, what's what's happening on the field. And it's not going to, it'll never, football rarely turns around in a year. Uh, but you have to be consistent in what you do and trust your process. You know, Eric, one of the things, I, you have a very difficult job. I would say that for any athletic director, it's a lot of responsibility. It's a very difficult job. And one of the tough parts of your job is you got to make sure that there are butts in the seats, right? The men's, mm-hmm. the men's basketball program, it's gotten better as far as attendance. And I think part of that is the job that Kevin and his staff has done. The women's basketball program, great crowds, right? But something that has lacked over the years is the UNLV football program as far as just getting butts in the seats. So what do you do as the athletic director what can you do to try to get as many people as possible not just to the game saturday win or lose but to get consistently thousands and thousands and thousands of fans to be going to these football games at allegiant stadium you know continuously put a a good product on the field that that will help get butts in the seats but at the same time uh you have to be able to you know, do some things before you win too. Uh, those are those are some things, and, and that comes into the marketing marketing piece, making it easy to get in in and out of the stadium, uh, easy you know traffic flow. Those particular things that are exceptional over there. And Allegiant Stadium is a new; it's still a new shiny penny, and people want to see that facility. But to continuously get people there, you got to do things consist- consistently. Yep. You have to also when when fans show up at the game. You have to treat them with the utmost respect, uh, make it easy for them to get in and out, make it easy for them to go to concession stand, make it easy to get to their seats. Do all those things that the, the fan experience is all about, and they'll come back win or lose if they have a great experience with all the other outlying factors from the parking attendant to the ticket takers to the – and this day and age is the mobile tickets – uh, but the concession stands and all those different areas that have, that impact the, the fan, those have to be seamless, fun, exciting pieces of the action. And it's not just about the game. It's, you know, you talk about the pageantry of college, college yeah. football. Yeah. Allegiant Stadium can be uh, a very, very great pageantry of college football. I gotta say, uh, Eric, I love the slot machine over there. Uh, I love, I love the slot machine they have in there at Allegiant Stadium. You're not gonna, <laughs> you're not gonna find that anywhere else in the country. And I feel like it's so Las Vegas. But you know what? I love it that it's fun. You know, it doesn't even know what the score. It doesn't matter what the score is. You score a touchdown. You make a big play. They're gonna go to the slot machine. How did that come about? And and I, I just think that's a really cool thing. It, it makes you guys different. You know, uh, with with. It was, I think, believe it was Coach Arroyo's idea. But you know, it's 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 about embracing the city that you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I I'm sure that there's there's been times when people try to try to knock the city of Las Vegas, and you know, we've all heard Sin City before. Mm-hmm. But you embrace the city you're in, uh, and that slot machine is a a staple uh, of what Las Vegas was built on. And if you look at it, it's an opportunity to to showcase Las Vegas. But at the same time, the energy that it does, and the fact that we are we have the International Gaming Institute that's on campus, and some of our student athletes are in the hospitality industry, and it's part of it. It's part of Las Vegas. It's it's part of what we try to do on a regular basis, and that is an exciting deal. Because when I see the the, the handle pulled down, we <laughs> we've either scored a touchdown, we've recovered a fumble, we've got a interception we kicked the field goal we've had a big play a big sack a big fourth down stop whatever it may be uh in the excitement aspect of, of UNLV football but uh, I'd love to see that uh the wheel spinning non-stop <laughs> yeah I love it and hey the, from my perspective Eric the best part about it is you don't have to put any money into the machine that's what that's what I like about it uh <laughs> you won't find that in any casino that's for sure uh, uh, it's, it's a no lose <laughs> That's right. Hey, Eric, last question for you, and I really do appreciate your time. Uh, how do people get tickets uh, if they're if it, maybe maybe they've never been to a UNLV football game before and they're excited and they want to go? Uh, give out that information. Uh, what's the easiest way for people to purchase tickets and parking and all that stuff? Give out all that information so the listeners you, know. You can you can go simply go to UNLV Athletics uh, UNLVTickets.com, and all the information is there. Or you can call our ticket office. Um, you can call our Rebel Athletic Fund. Uh, I would say you can call me, but uh, <laughs> I get a good chance of not answering. Uh, but it would be exciting. Uh, UNLVTickets.com uh, and all the ticket information, football, basketball, women's basketball, volleyball, 
uh, is on that site. Parking's on that site. And you can just show up at the game on Saturday, too, and we have tickets at the gate that we'll sell as well. No question. You know what? The basketball season, men and women right around the corner. Hopefully we can have you on again before those seasons get going. I'm excited for that as well. I'll see you there on Saturday, Eric. And I really do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's uh, Eric Harper. He is the UNLV athletic director. Uh, good guy. I always enjoy talking to him.